so cute. Ciao friends! Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by today to see my new super cowl that I did with my Catherine's wheel in the round. So look how big this is. Huge! Oh, I love it! And it's my new way of doing the Catherine's wheel in the round so we don't end up with seams. I hate seams. I made this one last year and I just love it but I do not like the seam. So I've had this in the back of my head all, all year. So I didn't want to make another cowl until it was started to get a little chilly. And so that's what I did right now. I put my head around how can I make the Catherine's wheel stitch in the round without any of these half, I like these little half wheels at the ends and things. And they just never line up very nicely. I just didn't like it. So now I have this one and as you can see no seams anywhere so i'll show you my new trick and how i did that i hope you're enjoying my video and my channel if so please click that button to subscribe thanks so now we have in the round no seams complete wheels every time and i'm going to show you how and i still have a lot of yarn left too so i'll even give you another tip if you want to make it even taller because right now it does do a nice hooded thing so, which is where I was going, but I could make it even longer. I had two, two skeins of mandala, and this thing was Griffin. Yes, Griffin. You can use cupcake. You can use whichever ones you want. This is a, it's a nice three weight. Very soft, very flowy. I absolutely love this color scheme. I thought this was great. And what I did here was I forced all these colors. I take this and cut all of the colors separately like this. All of my colors, I took two skeins and separated everything out and now I have gobbledygook that I have to go and use my my winder and get everything back into a nice little ball. It only took me a couple of days to get this done including trying to figure out how on earth am I going to make these perfect wheels every time. Well, I got it down and it's so easy. It's easier than doing Catherine's wheel on a flat piece. This is even easier. You don't have ever have any half circles. So what we need is, even working with the three weight, I want a six. Right here, this is a six in my prim. I love my prims. This one is actually a six and a half. This doesn't matter. A six or a six and a half will work. You just want to use this one for the very beginning chain because we're going to be working in the round. And I'm going to use these two colors so that they offset each other very nicely. That's this one right here. I've got this coffee color right here and the light blue from right here. Still from the Griffin pattern, but I thought that these would offset each other so you could see the stitches very nicely. So in order to show you this today, for my big cowl, using my six prim, my six millimeter prim, this was an initial chain of 140. 140 to make this big circle right in here, all of this, 140. I am not going to do 140, I'm going to do 40. So I could just show you the idea and then you'll be able to get started that much faster. So we start with our flat, no handle, no grip, nothing. Just a regular old basic hook, slip knot, and we are going to chain out. Let's chain out two and then mark our first stitch so it doesn't get too tight and get lost because we need every stitch. So there's two, three, four, five. Now when you get to about five, slip that down, keeping your chain nice and straight and slip the bottom end through that marked stitch. Now we will get no twist in our chain so we can work in the round without having to rip everything out later because we found out we have a twist. So there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. When you get to about ten, you'll be able to hold this end very nicely. And again, to get for this project, get to 140. I am going to go to 40. 39 and 40. I want to mark that last chain that I just made so we know 
that the first one is number one and this last one is number 40 and they don't get misplaced or get lost along the way. So I marked that stitch. Two loops on my hook. I'm going to take the front loop and pull it through the back loop. And then all the way around, starting here. See how that one tries to disappear on me? I don't want this stitch to disappear. That's why I marked it, because it gets a little gets a little clunky right at the very beginning. But I want to single crochet into that marked stitch. And now I want to move my stitch marker into the new single crochet that I just made. And we're going to single crochet all the way around and we need 50. Make sure you get 50 with no twist. So there was number one and I'll meet you at my other stitch marker. And there is number 40 right there. Chain is the hardest part to get going on. You would do 140 for this one. Remembering all, you can make it bigger or smaller as long as it's always a multiple of 10. Just any old multiple of 10. So this is my very base. Now I'm ready to make my wheels. So we're going to start with this one and the very first section here in this super dark blue that I made here it's only the top half of the wheel. Please remember that it really helps my channel when you watch the video all the way to the end. And now we're at the very beginning again and I'm going to switch out for the hook that I actually want to use for this project. I don't want to use this hook anymore. That was just so we could keep our chain from getting a loop in it or getting a twist in it. Now I'm going to use my prim because this is one of my favorite hooks and that's what I wanted to use for this project. So I'll put back back in. We want to slip stitch into our original stitch, our marks with the orange here. Do a slip stitch and a chain one so you're ready for the next round. And now we're ready to go. So this is our last stitch. This is our first stitch. So again, continuing on with our round two, you want to single crochet into the same stitch that's marked and move our stitch marker. And then do two more single crochets in the next two stitches. Two and three. The fun thing about this is you will never have any half circles. No half wheels. All the wheels are complete just by my little trick. So it will look it will never have a seam and it will always be perfect. Okay, we did our first three single crochet, then you skip three stitches. One, two, three. In the fourth stitch, we want seven double crochets in that same stitch. There's one, two, three, four, five, Six and seven. Skip three. One, two, three. And then the next three stitches after those skips are single crochets. One, two, three. Skip three. And that's our sequence all the way around to the other stitch marker. So skip, skip, skip seven double crochets in that next stitch. There's six and seven and I have three stitches left after my seven double crochets in the same spot. One, two, three. All three of these get skipped and we're going to go right over to our original starting point, our starting marked stitch and do a slip stitch and a chain one so we're ready for our next round. So I'm going to take out this blue because I don't need that marker anymore. Not there, I need it in my new sneaky place. So what we have, here's our last fan, our last top of the wheel with all seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of its double crochets. 
from our last stitch right here. I'm going to count back five. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. This is very important. Mark that fifth stitch from the end. Just keep you conscious of where the next starting point is going to be. Now for this last round here, I am going to single crochet all the way around, starting in that very first marked stitch where we did our slip stitch. So we get our uh, multiples of 10. So I'm going to do a nice edge right here. It makes it a little bit wider right in here so it's not so skinny because the original is so skinny. I just don't like it that way. So we're going to single crochet all the way around to that other, back to our blue marker. And here we go, my last one here. I just did a single crochet into the one that we marked that's five back. So I want to move my stitch marker to the new single crochet that I just made and finish out the rest of this round. So there should be four more stitches. and four. Now you can see we're still five stitches back. One, two, three, four, five. This is very, 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 very important. So now back at our first stitch that I have marked with orange, slip stitch and fasten off. You are done with mocha. So now you may be asking why on earth did we just move back five stitches when you still single crocheted them anyway, that doesn't make any sense. No, it makes lots of sense because what we're going to do is in order to keep everything nice and even all the time, all perfect, complete wheels and no seams and no half wheels connected at the other end, we will begin five back from our ending every time we're done with the sequence, every time we're done with the color. So how I made this look nice and has a really nice sharp edge here. It is not all muddled together. I really like doing this. So in order to make this pattern, go in back loop only. And now I'm going to fasten on my new color, which is the light blue. And single crochet in that stitch and single crochet back loop all the way around all of your stitches. And if you're, again, if you're making this pattern exactly, you will have 140. So here's my last stitch. Jump over to the one that's marked first. All of these are back loop only. And I'll meet you back at my blue stitch marker and show you how lovely this looks. Make a nice transitional edge. Here's my last back loop only. There. Now we have our transition row between this very dark and this very light color. I am going to slip stitch into my first light blue and chain one so we're ready for the next round. So this is our new starting spot over here at the blue. See the orange one's still there but we're not going to use that one anymore. I'm going to leave it there so I can show you how it works all the way around. All right, so there's my transition. It makes it a little bit more of a line instead of seeing the bottom part of my blue stitches like you can on the inside. Now it's more of a straight line and I really liked how that looks, especially when you're going from a light to a dark color right here. It made it a lot less noticeable and almost put like a little bit of an outline around it. And I really liked how that turned out. So that is part of my pattern now. So our next row, or next round, we just completed everything in blue here. Blue had three rounds, now we're on to this next one. We have to do our, the bottom part of our wheel. We did our first single crochet round, go back into the stitch that we just slip stitch into with a single crochet. 
and mark it because that's our new first stitch. One and two single crochets and then there's the third one. So the reason that I moved my stitch markers and our new starting our new starting spot is five stitches back so we can always start with a three single crochets in a row never have any half wheels no no four double crochets here and then three at the other end and try to make them look like a wheel never have to do that again so this is awesome good so there's our first three stitches always get to start every new color with three single crochets so there's never any weird trying to get a half a wheel connected to the other half of the wheel none of that happens so now we chain three and these next seven stitches are going to be double crochet seven together. So you go through the first stitch, pull through, pull yarn over, pull through two. Leave the last loop on your hook. Do not finish that stitch. And do that seven times. Five, six, and seven. So pull through two. Now we should have eight loops on our hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We do. So yarn over, pull through all eight of those loops, chain one to close. Now over here, I don't like to have the huge gap on this side because it ends up being a really big gap and I, I just thought it was a little bit too much. So I change it to do a slip stitch right here along the side and a slip stitch in the very last place where you had double crochet number seven. So there's our two chains are actually now two slip stitches. But we did not lose a stitch count. Now the next three are single crochets. One, two, and three. Chain three. And now we want to do seven, double crochet seven together again. Eight loops on our hook, pull through, chain one to close, and a slip stitch on the side, and a slip stitch in our last stitch. And we want to do that all the way around, back to our stitch marker. That is our sequence all the way around. Six and seven. There's my last one, eight loops on my hook, pull through, chain one to close, slip stitch on the side, slip stitch in that last double crochet stitch, and we are done with this round. Now we slip stitch into our marked first stitch and chain one, so we're ready for the next round. See how easy peasy that is? Everything stayed centered. Every round gets to start with three single crochets. So that's what we're going to do here in our first mark stitch. They're always single crochets on top of single crochets. One, two, and three. Top half of this wheel is the same thing we did down here. So in the chain one to close space, we want to put seven double crochets in that same stitch. One and seven. So there's the top of our wheel. Jump past our two slip stitches and we will always, always single crochet on top of the other single crochets. So there's three. One, two, and three. Seven double crochets in your chain one to close from the previous bottom part of your wheel. Skip our two slip stitches, single crochet in the next three, and that is your sequence all the way around. Six and seven. That's my last top of a wheel because I'm back to my stitch marker already. So now we want to slip stitch into our first mark stitch and chain one so we're ready for the next round. But here's my trick. 
This is a very important piece, like we did before. One, two, three, four, five. Count back five and mark that. That will be your new stitch starting with the next color. We have one more round to do, but it keeps it in mind, keeps this in your mind so you don't lose track of those five stitches because they are very important. So, now we just do a round of single crochet all the way around in the light blue. Evens up some of these stitches that might have gotten a little bit big. Single crochet all the way around. <laughs> oh, here we are at the marked stitch. This is the one that we moved five back. So we're going to single crochet into it and move that stitch marker into the new stitch. Just keeps that in your mind that that stitch is very important starting place. And now we have to complete the last four to get back to the stitch. Now we're back at the beginning of the blue. So we want to slip stitch into our first stitch and fasten off. So you remember this is our starting spot right here with the brown and then our starting spot with the blue and now our new starting spot Let's just grab a new color here. I have so many. And there's the pink right in here, the fuchsia color. I'll use that. It's really pretty. So remember what we did before. We want to fasten on. This is our new starting spot. This one doesn't matter anymore, but I'm leaving it there. So just to give you the visuals of this used to be the starting spot. This used to be the starting spot. This is our new starting spot. Going backwards five is how you get to always start with three single crochets instead of a half a wheel. Every round is exactly the same. Just by moving back those few stitches, every round, every color will be exactly the same. You don't have to remember that an eight or a ten row repeat. Just this simple repeat right here. So we want to go into the back loops to make that nice outline that we made right here. Remember? Yeah. Back loops only all the way around. There's four. And there's our last stitch here because that's where we just fastened off. So then jump to the back loop of our first stitch from the blue. And single crochet back loop only all the way around. Back to our orange stitch marker. There's my last stitch on my round of back loop only single crochets. Now I want to connect this color, so slip stitch in our first fuchsia stitch. Slip stitch and chain one so we're ready for the next round. And like I said, we get to start with three single crochets every round. One, two, and three. That's all you need to know. It's so easy. So you complete a color, complete a wheel with its outlines of single crochets, and then you move back five stitches as your new starting spot. That is the trick, because every round is exactly the same then. This sequence of four is exactly the same as this sequence of four, exactly the same as this sequence of four. Always the same. You don't have to remember that to start this side with four double crochets and then you have to do wheels and then you have another one. Nope. What you really need to remember, multiples of ten. No twist in your chain. When you're working in the round, complete your color sequence and then move back five stitches for your new starter. And that's really all you need to know. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimble Hooks. Like and share and do all kinds of things like that and stop back real soon. Thanks. Bye.